Well, I, I think that uh, actually the, the one thing I would draw on is the fact that uh, I, I have been in this area, technology, media, telecoms, law, for over 20 years by now, right? And uh, you're right, the themes don't really change so much. Uh, we've always been uh, worried about uh, on uh, contents. We've always been worried about protecting children. We've always been uh, concerned about how uh, intermediaries uh, uh, um, behave. Uh, we've always uh, been concerned about data, whether it's info, info security or data protection. Right. We've always been concerned about cyber crime, cyber security. I think that um, the operating environment and the technology has changed, mm -hmm. and the changes in the technology brings about different different uh, dimensions, right? So, uh, I mean, we use something as, sim as simple as, uh, um, let, let's just talk about uh, content, right? In the old days, uh, uh, and I'm t talking about really old days, right? Uh, you probably uh, drew something by hand or took a photograph, you yeah. scanned it. But uh, these days, uh, you have advanced tools. Uh, you can use uh, AI to generate some That's of these right. contents. But the point is that uh, if the content right, is offensive, if the content uh, is uh, harmful, if the content is false, it doesn't matter whether you did it by hand, whether you took a photograph by hand, or you used an AI tool to generate it. You are still responsible. So in that sense, the um, uh, responsibility and the legal issues don't change that much, but the tool, right, uh, introduces the technology introduces a different dimension. In the old days, uh, to use to do a fake image, yeah. easier to detect because the tools were not so sophisticated, and you needed uh, a, probably a smaller group of people had the necessary uh, photo editing yeah. skills. Today, because of Gen AI solutions, uh, it makes it a lot easier. Right, especially if you're going to talk about deep fakes and all that, right? right, makes it a lot easier. So the scale has changed. Um, the ability to detect um, has is a bit more challenging, right? And ability for uh, people who want to play around it with this technology, well, it's a little bit more accessible. But ultimately, to the, for every individual, right, the responsibility is still the same. Mm. Uh, so I want to bring up, since you talk about images, I want to bring up this case which has also been quite cited uh, today, which is the Jati, Jati versus the Stability AI case. Um, for our audience who's not too familiar with the case, it's really about Jati um, uh, alleging that the Stability AI uses its images, uh, which are copyright, without permission. Is that right? And But there's a lot of complexities about around how you actually go around to proving that case. So even though, I guess, conceptually, uh, it sort of makes sense, but legally, when it comes to you know, uh, proving the case, there's a lot of operational issues to consider. So I think one comment was, how do you actually prove that those images were used? And all AI models are so complex. So how do you go about you know, addressing all these operational issues? How do you go about mapping the operational issues to the legal sort of framework? That's quite a challenge. No, I, I think I think that 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 is a challenge, right? Uh, uh, when you want to bring a claim, right? When you make an allegation, you obviously need to be able to prove, right? And uh, uh, usually in the field of uh, litigation, you want to look for what we call the smoking gun, the piece of evidence that will prove it beyond doubt. But the reality is. Uh, very few cases turn on a smoking gun. Yeah. Uh, it really turns on hard work, putting a case together, finding the relevant evidence and piecing it all together and putting up a convincing case. And you've got good lawyers on both sides. They're going to each try and prove or disprove the case. So I think it makes no difference uh, in, in this situation. Right, okay. yeah. I see. So, But I think the, the interesting um, uh, discussion around that uh, case is really uh, to what extent uh, if you are able to access uh, copyrighted uh, data, right, copyrighted information, to what extent you can use it to develop your large language models or to use it to train your models. Uh, that is an issue that 
uh, is not new actually. Just, uh, uh, it's not new. It has right, been yeah. we've been we've been discussing it uh, even before Gen AI. We've been discussing it since uh, we were talking about small models, right? That's right. Yeah. 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 So 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 uh, uh, in Singapore, uh, we had a model framework that was put out under. Uh, jointly by IMDA and PDPC. Mm. The model uh, governance framework for AI uh, promotes good practices and good uh, responsible uh, pr practices so that AI that's produced is safe, uh, it is uh, fair, right? It is human centric, right? And th uh, there's, there's transparency. One aspect has always been data lineage, right? The provenance of the data. Where did you get your data from? Did you get it from a good source? Did, did, is the data, uh, can, you, can you use the data lawfully with authority to do so? Or has it been manipulated or changed uh, in some ways? Yeah. Uh, before so, so, you fit it into yeah. the system. Yeah, so, so th these are very valid concerns. Um, five, six years ago, so when we were looking at this, right, uh, copyright uh, was a concern. Right, if you're using data, do you do you have the ability to 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 to, to do so? Mm. Uh, personal data protection was also a concern, right? If it involves personal That's data, right. uh, do you have the necessary legal basis or consents to do so? That's right. Yeah. So these issues made no hasn't changed. Exactly. Yeah. But That's what right. has happened is that uh, because of um, some uh, interesting news, right, mm. it has gained some prominence. Right. I see. Because okay. some of the large language models that we re re we we use today. Yeah. Uh, they use the uh, data from public internet Correct. as part of the training data. Mm -hmm. uh, while this gained a lot of attention today, I, I want to also say that, again, it wasn't new. A uh, few years ago, uh, there, there was another case, Clearview AI, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's another solution um, provider. It was a case that was investigated at least by the UK um, Data Protection Authority and the French uh, Data Protection Authority. The, 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 the question was, uh, if you have Clearview AI, which is a facial recognition technology, uh, can they go onto the public internet and use personal data in facial images to train their model? Right, the conclusion for both of those investigations was uh, you need to identify a proper legal basis to do so. Mm -hmm. And both investigations concluded that uh, Clearview AI had, had not done that right. sufficiently. Okay. And then they were told that then you, you better make sure this is where you, you, you fell short, you need yeah. to do more. Um, with with, um, with uh, Gen AI, it's the same That's the issue. same story, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah. just that the technology is a bit different. It's a, it's a large language model, not facial recognition technology. But same issues have come up right. and we, we have the same learning, right? Which right, is exactly. identify a proper legal basis right, right. for you to do so. Or, or seek consent. Right? Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah.